We can use either vice grips or C-clamps to temporarily hold it in place. We mark the hole locations and then our electric drill along with a 3 16 inch bit is used to drill holes through the back of the frame uprights. One quarter inch by three quarter inch hex washer head self-tapping screws are inserted and tightened with the appropriate tools. When the firewall has been securely bolted to the frame, we use Window Weld, a 3M product available from most auto supply or automotive paint stores, to seal the seam between the frame and the firewall. This will also be used later to close any openings or gaps between the engine and the passenger compartment. A good quality silicone sealer could be used instead, but we prefer this material. With the window weld firmly in place, we peel off the backing paper. Our firewall installation is complete. Our thoroughly inspected motor mounts are now bolted to the brackets on each side of the frame. The open side of the metal retainer faces outward and the tab at the bottom engages one of the holes in the frame mounts. A thin 10 millimeter jam nut is used along with an internal star washer to secure the stud on each mount to the frame. The appropriate wrench is used to tighten the mounts. A few alterations are necessary before the Chevette brake pedal and accelerator brackets can be mounted to our new frame. After we have removed the plastic retainer plate from the accelerator side of the assembly, we mark a line down the indented area that divides the bracket. We also use our china marker and draw a line around the protruding oval piece to the left of the brake pedal. This must be cut flush, otherwise it will interfere with the battery box we'll be mounting later. There's a small flange on the driver's side that must also be cut flush to allow the brake pedal assembly to fit evenly against the frame uprights on the driver's side. With the assembly secured in a vise, we use a hacksaw to make the cuts. A file or grinder is then used to remove any sharp edges. While we're at it, now is an excellent time to prepare the brake differential valve or proportioning valve for installation. All we need to do is flatten out the L-shaped bracket. We use our vise and a hammer to accomplish this. Our differential valve is now ready for installation. Once the necessary modifications have been made to the brake pedal assembly, we can move to the driver's side of the passenger compartment and install the unit.
we slide the master cylinder studs through the holes located in the upper left corner of the firewall. The mounting holes in the pedal assembly are placed under the holes in the mounting brackets that are welded to the frame. We can now slide our master cylinder onto its mounting studs, engaging the hole in the master cylinder push rod with the stud on the brake pedal. Earlier, we determined that we should replace the master cylinder. We purchased a remanufactured unit from our local auto supply store. The remanufactured unit was fairly inexpensive since we exchanged the old unit, avoiding a core charge. When it comes to the brake system, we always replace any questionable parts without hesitation. The small expense is minor when compared to safety and peace of mind. The original factory nuts are threaded onto the studs and tightened with the appropriate tools. The two factory bolts are inserted through the holes in the mounting brackets into the threaded holes of the brake pedal assembly and tightened securely. Our brake pedal and master cylinder have now been installed. As the mounting relationship on our new chassis is somewhat different from that on our Chevette, we have slightly bent the two lines that attach the master cylinder to the brake differential. The valve was thoroughly inspected and cleaned in brake fluid. The valve is mounted to the firewall brace, just to the front of the firewall on the driver's side. After marking the hole location with a center punch, we drill a 5 16 inch hole and bolt the valve to the chassis. Later we will drill another hole and install another bolt. When we stripped our Chevette, we left the metal brake lines attached. We have purchased new brake lines as well as fuel lines from our local auto supply store, along with the appropriate fittings to connect the lines together. For the brakes, we use 3 16 inch tubing. We need about 15 feet. It's available in various lengths. For the fuel line, we need approximately 10 feet of 5 16 inch tubing, and the fuel return line requires about 10 feet of quarter inch tubing. These lines have fittings on each end and can be easily bent to shape and connected together. Let's take a few minutes and review the brake and fuel lines that we've installed. At the top of the differential valve, the original Chevette lines from the master cylinder are connected. The brackets that support the front rubber brake hoses are secured to each side of the frame, just above the front strut mounts. The rubber hoses are connected to the steel brake lines that come from the differential valve at this location. The rear brake line comes from the front of the differential valve, then goes down and back. Our original Chevette fitting was installed on this brake line. It has a metric thread, so we had to remove the fitting that came on the line. We reflared the line after the new Chevette fitting was slipped on. A local service station could have performed this operation for us. The front brake lines come from the back and bottom of the differential valve. The fuel vent line that runs to the charcoal canister ends just below the front of the differential valve. Later, a piece of rubber fuel hose will be used to connect this line to the charcoal canister that will mount against the frame above the strut. Let's take a look at the lines from the other side. Here we have our fuel feed line that will be connected to the fuel pump. It runs back along the frame to the gas tank and will be connected with rubber fuel hose. We can see the right front brake line that runs along the bottom inside lip of the front cross member to the frame above the right strut bracket, where it attaches to the right rubber front brake hose. The fuel feed line runs back along the inside of the driver's frame rail, where it meets the rear brake line and fuel vent line behind the firewall. We'll move to the rear and follow the lines.
We can see where the brake line, fuel feed line, and fuel return line pass by or behind the firewall to the inside of the driver's side main frame rail. Then they run back to the rear. Metal clamps secure them to the chassis. These clamps were removed from our original Chevette, or they can be purchased from a General Motors parts department. Similar clamps can be obtained from a hardware store. Before we drill holes for the clamps and attach them to the chassis with self-tapping screws, we use large tie wraps to secure them temporarily to the frame. When we are sure that they are in their final position, we drill our holes and permanently attach them. The metal brake line ends just where it will be joined to the rubber brake hose. The two lines that run to the gas tank follow the frame up and back, then around the center rear cross member above the stabilizer bar where they will be secured to the gas tank. After we have mounted our brake and fuel lines, we are going to deviate from the instruction manual and install the fuel tank. The original Chevette tank is ideal for our 1929 SSK replicar, but because of its width, the fill hose neck and vent hose neck have to be relocated. For comparison, we have placed two Chevette tanks side by side. The original tank appears on the right of the screen, and a properly modified tank on the left. Checking our yellow pages, we find a gas tank repair shop. We have them move the two hose necks to the top of the tank and patch the original location. When this is done, the tank is thoroughly cleaned and painted. If we couldn't locate a gas tank shop, we would contact a radiator repair shop that should be able to perform the same work. The modified gas tank will allow us to locate the fuel cap at the left rear of the body. The original Chevette tank straps, along with the new fuel hose, will be used. Now that we have modified our gas tank, we can properly install it on our new chassis. The two original Chevette gas tank straps are placed in position going through the brackets that are welded to the steel frame. We use the original factory screws to secure these at the front. After the front screws have been tightened, we locate the rear strap mounting holes on the rear cross member. We mark the locations with a grease pen. Then a center punch is used to make the initial indentation at the hole center.